Well, good afternoon. My name is John O'Dea. I'm CEO of a company called Crossbon. Uh, we're based in Galway on the west of Ireland. And uh, I'd like to thank ERCAD for their invitation here today to give a brief overview of some of the trials and tribulations involved in starting a medical device company. Crossbond was founded in November 2006, and we're, as I said, based in Galway, Ireland. And our primary focus is in uh, gastroenterology and gastrosurgery. Um, our product has been out for a um, couple of years now. It was CE marked in January 2009, and uh, it was 510 k approved in the U.S. in December 2009. Um, the technology is, is, is a multi-purpose imaging technology, and we're currently looking to diversify that into other measurement applications beyond the gastrointestinal tract. So this is what we make. It's a product called EndoFlip. It's an imaging system that allows you to measure the cross-sectional area of hollow organs in the gastrointestinal tract. It does this in real time so that during surgery, for instance, the surgeon can see dimensions changing as they apply stitches or staples or whatever else to the, to the gastrointestinal tract. Um, I think what's a little different from this than, say, for instance, MRI or other imaging techniques is that it allows the organ that's been measured to be distended while that measurement has been taken so that you can essentially get a, a functional diameter of the, of the organ um, as distinct from what you would visualize. So, for instance, one can think of this like a, a bolus of food, for instance, passing through the gastrointestinal tract. It's going to cause what it passes through to stretch, and therefore that's the measurement that we're taking. So, for instance, if one thinks of a roux and uh, bypass, you've, you've got a stoma there between the, the stomach and the duodenum. And um, as the food passes through that, it's going to stretch that. So, for instance, the degree of restriction as that bolus of food passes through the stoma could be very high or it could be very low. So, for instance, if the stoma completely stretches, then that's not going to be a very effective break to the food. Whereas if the stoma stays very tight, then it's going to be a, a very effective break. And so one can start to look at stomas and lumens in, in, in a different manner. It's a unique technology. There's nothing like there uh, like it in the mom in the market at the moment. And um, as I say, it's a, it's a pioneering technology that we're introducing. So one of the first applications that we've been looking at is is for intraoperative assessment of missing fund application. And indeed, uh, a lot of the early operations have been done here in, in ERCAD. And uh, these are actually uh, pictures from uh, one of the first uh, ERCAD um, uh, operations we did back probably in 2009. Can the tool be used to help guide the decision for surgery? This is something we, we continue to ask ourselves. We can certainly measure the mechanical competence of the GEJ. Whether that alone can help guide the decision for GERD surgery remains to be seen, but certainly surgery fixes a mechanical problem, and we can look at the degree of mechanical impairment in the sphincter. And um, as, as the literature builds, we're, we're trying to come to a conclusion where this has a role in the, in the preoperative decision as, as opposed to um, purely guiding the, the, the surgical operation itself. Another application that we're using this for is for intraoperative lap band adjustment. Um, currently, lap bands are adjusted in a, uh, adjusted in a very heuristic manner, and uh, for the first time now, a surgeon can actually set the stoma size to, to have a precise um, restriction set, um, not only after surgery, but in particular during surgery. So, for instance, you know, we, we've had cases where the patient you know, might have had five mil put into the band, um, which normally would take five, six months to get to, so they're starting off from, from a, a much better place. So that's a little bit of background on what we do. Um, really what I'm here today to talk about is, is, is you know, what, what should you be thinking about when you do a startup? And, um, you know, at the, at the outset, one would say that the climate is not great, um, particularly for medical devices. Um, the returns to venture capital are at a historic low. And uh, certainly you can look over the last number of years at, at this chart here from the Wall Street Journal. And a lot of uh, big venture capital companies are actually exiting from the medical device investment space um, for a variety of reasons. The returns aren't there, the regulatory hurdles that companies are having to face. So this is the backdrop that you know, you're operating against in, in doing a medical device startup. Conversely, if one looks at the other end, if you have a very successful exit, you can see that it, it is well worth your while. And uh, if one looks at the, the valuations on some of these transactions, they're, they're very, very high. 
However, these are the these are the tip of the iceberg, and there's a lot a lot of companies below the tip of the iceberg that uh, you don't see in these. But in particular, one of the points to note here is that a lot of these companies are achieving these valuations with only a CE mark and not with a, a 510k or a PMA approval. So that you're now seeing a, a a strong drive indeed to to do startups in Europe or even people coming from the US and setting up in Europe 